Hello everyone. So today we are going to cover the software testing interview questions at Capgemini. And in this video, we will cover the questions, interview questions for both that are asked for a manual testing position as well as for an automation testing pos position. So the first question would be, you know, in order to check in which form you are working and what is the total experience, what technology you are using. And it's like, you know, what are your roles and responsibilities? So that would be your first and first and foremost question. Okay. So you have to describe everything about yourself. What are your, what are your day to day activities? And uh, let's say if you are running some Jenkins pipeline or you are checking some automation suits or you are executing some test cases. So all those activities you have to describe. And basically this question is asked in order to check whether you are proper for this role or not. Okay, so it, it is a very basic question and you will not get this question only in Capgemini, but it would be there for every interview. Okay, the next question that is foremost and you know, very, very frequently asked and it is the favorite of the interviewer is the components involved in test plan. So you have to basically tell about all the components and if they tell you to explain in detail, then you can tell the details as well. But as we all know, test plan identifier, then introduction to the test plan, test items, then features to be tested, not to be tested, along with a proper reason, approach, item pa pass fail criteria, suspension criteria, test deliverables, testing task, environmental needs, responsibilities, staffing and training needs, schedule, risk approvals. So these are all the components that are involved in a test plan. Okay. Now, what is the difference between sanity and smoke testing? Now, as we all know, this is a very basic question. So smoke testing is done by both developers or testers, whereas sanity testing is done only by testers. Okay, so sanity testing would be performed only by the testing team. So smoke testing verifies the critical functionalities of the system, whereas sanity testing verifies the new functionality like bug fixes is there or any of the new defect fixes that have come into the build. So that would be done by the sanity testing. Again, smoke testing is a subset of acceptance testing, whereas sanity testing is a subset of regression testing. Also, smoke testing is documented, whereas sanity testing is not. Okay, so sanity testing verifies a particular component, while smoke testing verifies most of the functionalities in a system. Now, they'll they'll also ask you how do you choose severity and priority. Okay. Now, severity in all the organizations, generally it is decided by, uh, you know, tester itself until unless he's a fresher or he's a junior QA. So then the severity would be decided by the test manager or the test lead. But generally, if you will see the culture in the organization in which you are testing, so severity would be decided by the testing team, by you, by tester, while priority parameter is assessed by the product manager or the triaging team. So triaging team might include uh, test manager, development manager, technical leads, and they will do a basic triaging that which are all the defects that are required to be fixed for this release. And then they'll, uh, they'll triage a particular defect and then they'll assess whether it is good to fix or not. And then they'll take the decision. But generally severity is uh, the decision making of the severity is <clears throat> sorry, is dependent on the tester itself. Now, severity of a defect, you know, uh, it, it should be, it should be it very, very, you know, conscious when you are selecting the se severity of the defect, because basically the severity of the defect would influence the priori priority of the defect. Okay. So hence it is very important as a tester to select the right severity to avoid confusion with the other teams. Okay, then difference between test scenario and a test case. Now, as we all know, test case is a set of actions, you know, that are executed. Whereas test scenario is a functionality that can be tested. Okay, now test case is a very low level testing and test scenarios are high level actions. Again, test case is mostly derived from the test scenarios while test scenarios are derived from the test artifacts like BRS is there, SRS is there, you know software requirements, specifications, business requirements, specifications. So from all these specification documents, the team will come out with a true of the high level test scenarios. And then test case would be derived from them. 
then test cases are focused on what to test and how to test while test scenario is more focused on what to test okay so this is also a very frequently asked question and then uh, you know you might be asked do you work in agile or waterfall model now these days most of the companies are working in agile model so even if you are working in the waterfall model at your organization learn about agile and if you are able to you know get a good job into the organization like capgemini or other mncs then definitely you have to uh, follow agile model because most of the projects would be having agile model over there so you have to tell about the sprint the duration of the one iteration and what are all the it iteration wise testing you are doing over there when do you demo and how do you demo to the customer client stakeholder if you are getting an opportunity let's say every friday at morning 10 am you are supposed to give the demo to the stakeholders that are there in the us team so how you are giving the demo or something like this on the same lines okay so so agile model is you know preferable model in the organizations these days while waterfall model is a legacy model so until and unless you know it is required stick to the model that is followed into your organization because you might be asked further questions on that and basically they might be expecting the agile model because they have projects agile on agile in, in there okay now this is a very uh, good question what will you call the type of testing which helps one to know about the application okay now it, so this is a type of a testing in which you are not knowing much about the application but uh, this is a testing in which you will do the testing and you will come to know about the functionality about the behavior of the application so this is called adaptability testing what is defect leakage so defect leakage is a metric which is used to identify the efficiency of the qa testing okay that is how many defects are missed or got slipped during qa testing so the, the, this is also one formula defect leakage equal to number of defects found in user acceptance testing divided by number of defects found in qa testing okay what is endurance testing so endurance testing is basically a non functional testing again and it is also known as soak testing so this question might come up to you as a what is known as soak testing so don't confuse it is same as endurance testing is itself and endurance testing you know it involves testing a system with a significant load and that too for a significant period of time to discover how the system behaves under sustained use that is let's say if you are if you want to test a particular application and uh, and that that particular application is been tested for uh, one hour but the testing team is uh, more interested to know what would be the response of the system during 3 hours okay just to test the memory leaks and uh, the the some failures are not occurring into the system okay then what is incremental model so as we all know incremental model is one of the method of software development life cycle sorry software development and where the product is designed implemented and tested incrementally that is you will be designing it for a for a for some part of time and then you will be also implementing it so the development and maintenance goes hand in hand okay so the product is defined and finished when it satisfies all of its requirement Okay, so these are the points that you have to tell when you are asked about incremental model that is it is not completed in one shot it would be first designed and it would be implemented as well tested and then again it would be designed implemented and tested so this is a continuous cycle that is going on until and unless the all the requirements are being met what is requirement traceability matrix they can also ask what is rtm okay rtm means requirement traceability matrix itself so it is a high level document to map and trace user requirements with the test cases okay now this is generally done so that we can come to know that all the requirements are being covered as one or the other test cases so that we are not missing any of the requirements so this is very important as one to one mapping is done between requirement and test cases okay so so the the defect you know there there are less chances to get a defect into the production because ultimately you have got some requirement and you have got some test case map to it so that test case would be covered in the testing itself that is why this matrix is very important okay so this is the process to review all the test cases that are defined for any requirement is called 
traceability so generally traceability is what it is a process it is a kind of a you know procedure that you are reviewing all the test cases and you are seeing that none of the requirement has been has not been covered traceability enables us to determine whether the requirement spawned the most number of defects during the testing process so as i mentioned it earlier this would help you to get maximum defects you know uncovered during the testing process itself okay now give some positive and ne negative test cases for bottle and there is also you know question asked like uh, positive and nest ca negative test cases for pen so for pen i have covered in earlier videos and for bottle we will cover in this video so let's first look at the positive test cases so whenever you get some you know objects to be you know for which you have to define some high level test scenarios or test cases so what you will do is first you should go for the dimensions of the object then you can write a test scenario on the color material weight okay then you should think about you know some of the key things some of the integration things like let's say if a bottle is there and a cap is there so we have to make sure that we have to do the verification of that the that the bottle and the cap is being adjusted properly okay cap should not be loose cap should be tightened okay then then you are checking the object with the various liquids and like you know water is there tea is there okay then we are checking the brittleness of the bottles material check the insulation of the bottle verify the maximum temperature of the liquid allowed minimum temperature of the liquid allowed you know check if the expiry date is clearly mentioned or not so let's say if it's a bottle and it should have some expiry date so that you don't get uh, to use it after that also now let us mention some negative test cases okay so as we were testing about you know or as we were dis discussing about minimum and maximum temperature then over here you can also discuss about check the bottles condition on pouring a liquid at a very high temperature at a very low temperature okay less than the allowed value or more than the allowed value to test the bottle at the extreme conditions okay then we will throw the bottle to the ground and check whether it is breaking or not it is breakable or not check the bottle with the cold ring or a hot ring at the maximum levels at the you know levels which is not allowed for that particular bottle okay then we can also check it with respect to a very high pressure more than the normal pressure okay so what are different testing models so as we all know waterfall model agile model v model spiral model iterative and rad these are the various testing models so what is regression and retesting so regression testing is performed to make sure that the code changes have not affected existing features okay so it is it is done to make sure that the unexpected side effects are not being there while retesting is done to make sure that the origin original defects have been fixed or not okay now these were few of the manual testing questions okay now let's okay. so let's now look at the automation testing questions that are being asked okay so so far these were the manual testing questions that you will get if you are applying for a manual tester now if you, if there is a position for an automation tester then which are the favorite or which are the top asked questions now let's look at the automation questions that are being asked at the capgemini interview so which are various test ng annotations so as you all might be aware the test ng is been used with in the selenium okay so these are all the test ng annotations before suit after suit before test after test before groups after groups before class after class before method after method and test itself so before suit basically the annotated method will be run before all the tests in this suit have run and after suit means method will be run after all tests in this suit have run same holds true for before test it also it the method will be run before any test method belonging to the classes okay and after test the method will be run after all the test methods belonging to the classes inside the tag okay similarly before group after group before class after class before method the annotated method will be run before each test method and and for after it will be done after each test method okay 
so this this is this way you can explain next thing they will ask is how to execute a particular test method multiple times say five times in test ng okay so what you can do is you can uh, use an attribute invocation count okay so with with the test you can mention this invocation count equal to five and then this method so this system dot out dot print and then login in admin is successful so this line would be printed for five times basically using this invocation count okay what is interface so an interface in java as we all know is a blueprint of a class okay it has static constants and abstract methods okay it cannot have a method body so you can see this example interface animal and it has got some methods okay but they don't have body what is abstraction so abstraction is a process of hiding the implementation details and showing only functionality to the to the user okay so it shows only essential things to the user and hides the internal details for example you know sending sms where you type the text and send the message you don't know the internal processing about the message delivery okay so abstraction lets you focus on what the object does instead of how it does okay. Now, can abstract class have a constructor? Yes, an abstract class can have a constructor. What is an encapsulation? So, as we all know, encapsulation is a process of wrapping code and data together into a single unit. And then we are using setter and the getter methods to set and get data in it. Okay. And again, you can take an example of a capsule which is mixed of various medicines. Okay. So, we can create a fully encapsulated class in Java by making all the data members of the class private. Okay, and then as we discussed, we can use setter and getter methods to set and get the data. Okay, now why do we need weights in Selenium? So as we all know, we have got weights, multiple weights like, you know, fluent weight is there, implicit weight is there, explicit weight is there, but why are they required? So the reason behind this is, you know, most of the web applications are developed using Ajax and JavaScript. So when a page is loaded by the browser, the elements in which we want to interact may load at different time intervals okay so so it becomes you know difficult and it is uh, it is like the automation tool has to wait for some particular time by the time that element becomes visible otherwise the selenium will throw an element not visible exception okay so using weights we can resolve this problem so advantages of test ng over j unit so annotations are easier to understand test cases can be grouped more easily and parallel testing is possible now what is the difference between throw and throws again this is a very good question and throw is a keyword which is used to throw an exception ex explicitly in the program inside a function or inside a block of code while throws is a keyword which is used in the method signature and it is used to declare an exception which might get thrown by the function while executing the Code. okay so thank you for watching this video and if you have any queries please comment on the video below and if you if you are also getting any interview calls so please share the interview questions with our channel so we can help the community at the maximum level okay so thank you for watching stay tuned for more videos